And I'm not making my cats walk down the stairs. Is there a hair in my mole? Please know that they're stupid. And yes, I'm calling mean people stupid. You should too. I don't even understand my own anxiety. How am I going to understand my cat's anxiety? I'm genuinely turning into a grandma. Hello everybody! I haven't brushed my teeth this morning and it is 11.35. Don't act like you've never done it. I mean, maybe you haven't and then actually good for you. Also don't question why I'm using just the head of my toothbrush. Well, I guess I could put it back on. This toothbrush has been dead for longer than I would like to admit. Also, I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but remember how I said my other camera was being really funky? I still can't figure it out. So we're G7X vlogging, that way you don't go without. I don't know if it's a symptom of Manjaro, even though I haven't taken a Manjaro shot in two weeks, three weeks, because I'm switching to Zepbound and we haven't been able to get Zepbound into literally any pharmacy. Finally, fingers crossed, there's a pharmacy that can fill my prescription. I don't know if this is a symptom of the GLP-1. It has been so hard to brush my tongue. I'll just leave it at this. I have lost my whole dinner while brushing my tongue. My gag reflex has just been so easily triggered. Yesterday, which you guys saw, oh my gosh, I'm vlogging two days in a row. Pat on the back. I cleaned my entire house. I just needed to refresh that space for the new year. But as I was looking around at everything, I realized she needs a deep clean. I'm gonna do my skincare routine while we chat. My baseboards need to be cleaned. I never knew what that meant until I started watching cleaning TikToks and people were doing their weekly cleaning schedules. I went down that rabbit hole for a minute. I do feel like having a weekly cleaning schedule would work really well for me. Like on Mondays, we mop. The concept was like doing certain house tasks every day instead of doing one big cleaning at the end of the week. My baseboards are so dirty. I have huge windows out in my living room and they just have Duncan nose smudges all over them. I have cleaners that come every two weeks. They just do more maintenance cleans, not enough necessarily deep cleans. The first time they come clean your house, it's usually a deep clean and then maintenance from there. Maybe it's because I was sick for so long that I just feel like my house is grimy. She's grimy, she's gross, and she needs a deep cleaning. So I messaged my cleaners because I had canceled my cleaning session this week. I was just in a sad girl, I wanna be at home alone era. And the lady responded and said they had time today at 1.15. So I ran around my house this morning and made sure that it was ready for a deep cleaning. We're double cleansing. I just put way too much. Exfoliate. I don't know what I was saying. Oh, maybe I'm wrong for thinking this. When people come to clean your house, they're not coming to pick up your house. They wipe everything down, they, they get in the little crevices, and they just clean it. So every other week before they come, I run around my house to make sure everything's picked up so they're able to clean without having to move around my mess. Maybe that's not something I am supposed to be doing or am expected to do, but I just feel like it makes their job easier. Like, how are they gonna clean your house if they come in there and your shit's everywhere? They're gonna be here at 1 15 so i'm kind of just slowly getting ready because i was just running around like a mad woman all morning that i just need to take a break take a breather being transparent i would definitely typically be scrolling on the couch right now but i think i mentioned it a little bit in my last video that i really need to stop having social media consume so much of my life like it's already my job it takes up enough hours of my day as is i can't let it take more my plan is to just fill that time that i notice i'm scrolling with Hobbies. Things that make me happy because then I feel like I'll look at the internet as a happy place again. I've looked at it as such a negative thing the past six months. Oh no, my camera's dying. Whatever, it looks like that's a sign that I need to shut up. I'm just gonna finish this skincare routine. Nothing exciting. And I'll see you in a second. I'm a girl who loves food. I'm a girl who loves convenience. And it just happens to be lunchtime. I wanna say a huge thank you to one of my favorite sponsors in the entire world, Factor. Hold on, let's pick our Factor meal. And if you think I'm kidding, I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 Factor meals in my fridge. Mm hmm What do we wanna eat though? Ooh, shredded chicken taco bowl is one of my favorites. 44 grams of protein. Um, herb crusted chicken. Hmm. Chicken's giving dinner. Tacos give lunch. If they come with these little cups, remember to take it out. Trust me, I've been there. Three minutes. Technically, they only have to cook for two minutes. I like to cook it for three. If you are new here or you have just simply never heard me talk about Factor or heard anybody else talk about Factor, it is an absolute honor to introduce you to my favorite thing in the world, besides my mom. I know with the new year comes setting a lot of goals and Factor's ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and it's set you up for success. Their meals are fresh and never frozen. Factor allows you to skip going to the grocery store. Hold on. 
Come on out, little one. I'm gonna let her sit for a minute. You don't have to do any of the prep work that comes along with cooking yourself a nice, well-balanced meal. Also, I don't care what anybody says, cooking three meals a day gets tiring. But with Factor, you can get chef-crafted and dietitian-approved meals delivered straight to your door. They have over 35 meal options to choose from each week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. Plus, there's over 55 weekly add-ons, so you'll always have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to start your new year. Their meals are ready to heat and serve in literally just two minutes, so if you're impatient like me, it's perfect. For me personally, I've spoken a lot about this. Factor is something that I use daily. I pay with my money every single week for this subscription. The amount of times these meals have saved me from a binge is countless. I have tried other heat and serve meals before, and they always taste like doo-doo. Am I picking all the beans out? Yes. I always keep it real with you guys. I am a very picky eater. This meal is my absolute favorite meal that they make, with the exception that I just don't like beans. And to me, it's not a big deal to pick them out. I grew up pretty much always having to pick things out of my meals because I'm just that picky of an eater. There was pretty much always something in food that I didn't like or wasn't willing to try. And the texture of beans, I just can't get behind. Even though I know they're good for you. I did wash my hands before you say anything. It takes literally two seconds. Oh my gosh, I can just smell so good. A lot of times when you get meals like this, they just aren't seasoned, they don't taste good. If something is gross to me, I'm simply not gonna eat it. You don't have to put it in a different bowl. It just helps me feel like I cooked it. The best part. I don't know why I'm incapable of the easiest tasks. Yummy. Factor has been a huge part of my journey with food and healing my relationship with food. I know I always have some of these in my fridge. That way, if I can feel a binge coming on, I can eat one. If I'm busy and I know I don't have time to cook, but I want to stay on track, I know I have two minutes to spare. I honestly save money with Factor because I'm not spending all the money on takeout or even at the grocery store. And you can go on their website and pick whatever meals you want. You can also skip a week if you want. I forgot they were sending me a box this week, so I should have skipped this week, but I didn't, which is how I ended up with 12 meals in my fridge. No complaints here. I just literally don't have to cook this week. I actually, hold on a second. I didn't even know they had these. Wellness shots. They were in my box this week and I was like, mmm, fun. Well, wellness shots are never like, mmm. They make me feel like I'm doing something right. Let's take one. They sent me three different flavors. Turmeric spice. It's lemon, apple, ginger, honey, turmeric, and black pepper. Live greens. Spinach, kale, celery, lemon, and E3 live. And cayenne cleanse. Apple, ginger, lemon, and cayenne. Let's try our greens. I never expect these to taste great. I just expect them to be edible. It smells like green. Oh, I only taste lemon and celery. Well, that was easy. And you all know I'm dramatic. So if Factor seems like something that you guys would be interested in, you can head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SamanthaJoe50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, you can head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SamanthaJoe50 and that's gonna get you 50% off your first Factor box. My only warning is if you do it once, you're gonna get addicted and have to keep getting it. Every person that I've told to start using Factor gets hooked. Once again, a huge thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. I genuinely believe that they will go down in history as my most used sponsor. At this point, I've definitely given them more money than they've paid me. And I'll continue to do it. Worth every penny. So you remember how I was telling you that my camera basically is effed up? My entire career, I've used Canon cameras. And I'm pretty sure I told you guys that when I bought a Sony camera. Mistake. Honestly, I can't blame the camera. I did drop it. I didn't hate it, but I also did not love it. In order for me to continue vlogging, I needed to replace the camera. Essentially, every clip that I would film would be out of focus. We honestly needed another camera for the podcast anyways, which I've seen your questions. And yes, the podcast is coming back. We're rebranding it a little Little bit so it's taking a little bit of time but once she's back she's back for good really get in there two weeks ago i got a scalp facial my dandruff can get pretty gnarly do you hear that and during that she used this amica reset pink charcoal scalp cleansing oil i have never ever went to sephora and bought something faster it says it's a purifying pre-wash in an oil to foam hybrid with pink clay that removes buildup invigorates and hydrates to encourage a healthy scalp I'm actually gonna let it sit for a few minutes. <laughs> my Vyvanse, not my precious Vyvanse. I don't remember if I told you guys in the last vlog or not, but we're medicated again. Or if I've said it in this vlog, I don't know. I need to update my 
address. CVS, because this still says Nashville. Estheticians look away. My last makeup wipe. I'll make an effort to not buy any more. I'm a sucker for anything that makes my scalp feel cold. And this makes my scalp colder than anything else I've ever put on it. It's the reason I was so obsessed with the Purology shampoo for a while and the purple bottle. This is so bad for my eyes. It burns. <laughs> That's probably not a good sign. I've gotten to that point where my hair is so grown out and just so meh in between hair appointments because it's been what five months that I just don't do anything with my hair anymore so I'm so excited to go get my hair done I don't have my phone on me because I haven't been sticking to my phone I've actually been so good about it I probably scroll for like an hour a day now versus six six hours that's ridiculous I just feel gross and I've learned I have much better days if I'm clean not even necessarily dressed up or anything just clean in a comfy outfit and I feel taken care of if I'm washing my hair I prefer to shower in the other shower I don't know why bring in face wash the way anti-dandruff shampoo I've been double cleansing my skin I've heard that's a thing I'm also gonna bring my caudally face wash in there if that's said wrong I don't care I usually use this pre-wash oil but we're not doing that today is there a hair in my mole uh hmm I feel like there is. I think you're gonna get to live another day. I know I'm not the only person who suffers with dandruff. Suffer might be a dramatic term to use, but it sure as shit ain't fun. I also really like this Briagio Scalp Revival Charcoal and Coconut Oil Micro Exfoliating Shampoo. I feel like I'm not the person people come to to be influenced to buy things, but if I've ever influenced you to buy one thing, have it be this. I'm in heaven right now with how my head feels. Let's go take a shower. It's just so cozy in here. It's that easy. Take a shower. Sometimes I need a reminder, so maybe one of you needs a reminder too. You no, know, depending on what you're going through and different things that you may suffer with, that can definitely be one of those things that is easier said than done. But you deserve to be clean and you deserve to take care of yourself and you deserve to give yourself the same love and attention that you gave all the other people in your life. So please go take a shower. I also can smell you through the screen, but I was trying to be nice and not bring that up. Before I eat or drink anything that's not water, I've been forcing myself to drink an entire Hydro Flask. Four ounces. Because otherwise it'll be 6 p.m. and I'll realize I haven't even finished one yet. I think we did it. My skin has been extra sensitive recently. So I'm gonna chill on the toners. And we're just gonna hydrate her. Make her happy. I've also got breakfast on my mind. Breakfast on my mind. This area of my scalp is always the worst for my dandruff. I swear this is the last dandruff product I'll show you, but this is the Briogeo Scalp Revival Charcoal and Tea Tree Scalp Treatment. I always just put a little bit on. It won't make your hair greasy and rubber in there. And the reason I feel compelled to share my dandruff journey is because when I first started noticing that I was getting dandruff, I kind of felt alone in it and I felt like I was doing something wrong and it took me a really long time to find videos on how to fix it that weren't just use dandruff shampoo because dandruff shampoo alone was not helping me so I figured I would just share it with you in case you're also struggling with dandruff I also have unfortunately started to notice more of my hair falling out which I'm aware is a symptom of weight loss I've been so careful to make sure that I've been eating enough and getting all of my protein I kind of thought it was avoidable but it might not be for me I should probably start taking some type of hair vitamin I just don't know what a good one is so y'all know what to do get your fingers and type in comment a good hair care vitamin I just want to cover all my bases and we're reduce the damage as much as possible. But worst case scenario as I get extensions put in or I just rock the thin hair for a while. I'd rather have thin hair and have my body be healthy than have luscious hair and be this close to diabetes. Maybe I'm not done talking about the dandruff. Something I've also noticed really helps my dandruff is blow drying my hair. And I've noticed it doesn't get greasy as fast if I blow dry it. No clue if that's scientific. Before I blow dry it, we're spraying Color Wow. I'm also gonna mix a little bit of this in, like a power combo. Still a little bit damp in the back, but she's about 90% dry. 95 probably. Filming today, so I need, well, I don't need to put makeup on. A little bit of makeup won't hurt anybody. We're gonna have a titty situation real fast. My everyday routine doesn't change a ton, mostly because I don't put makeup on every day. I almost need something to keep my hair out of my face. All I have are my Disney ears. Baymax it is for today. Dobby is the most vocal cat I've ever had. 
Yeah, I'm talking about you. He's just sliding around my house right now. I might regret this, but I'm gonna try a new foundation from House Labs, Haas Labs. I think that's gonna be a good color. Everyone has tried this but me. It's been so long since I have found a foundation that I like. That might be the most perfect color match I've ever had. I might watch this back and disagree, but it looks pretty good right now. It also feels really thin. I actually haven't been buying new makeup at all because I have so much of it that I need to use. I've become more self-aware in the past few months how wasteful American consumption is. Even though I'm gonna continue to consume, I wanna at least attempt to be better about it. But since it's winter, I have gotten so pale, even though I live in Florida, and I'm not good at self-tanning. So I just accept the fact that I'm pasty. It's probably better for my skin this way anyways. First impressions, I feel like that looks pretty good. I don't really feel like I need a ton of concealer either. Maybe just a smidge. I'll just put a little bit of this. At some point, I'll master the less is more makeup routine. That probably isn't gonna be today. If you see a titty, just look away. Blush. I really did fall in love with blush the past year. I never used cream blushes. The reason I never really wore blush is because I have such red skin naturally. I just felt like I needed to cover it up. Adding that redness back in felt wrong almost. Whenever I would do a full face of makeup, I would look like a corpse. I've learned to not hate the redness in my face anymore. I used to get made fun of at school for it a lot. People constantly pointing out, oh, she's blushing or whatever honestly kids are just assholes if you're in school and people are being mean to you please know that they're stupid and yes i'm calling mean people stupid you should too setting our face with some powder i'll go all day without an itchy face until the second i start putting makeup on then i suddenly want to scratch everything i only have three modes no makeup mascara and eyebrow gel only or a full face of makeup i don't do much to my brows i really want to find somebody that can do my brows Looks like we're not doing our brows at all today because there's nothing in it. We'll just gel them down and call it a day. I got my acrylics taken off yesterday. I just got my real nails painted. Look how long they are. But unfortunately, we had one casualty. She'll grow back. I don't think I've ever had my natural nails this long. It feels so much better than having freaking acrylics or even gel X on. I know they're way more fragile like this. I feel so light. I've considered taking them off so many times. I just hate how stubby and nasty my fingers look. Well, that's what my brain tells me anyways. When I don't have the acrylics, on. I don't think they look that bad. And it's way more natural and less maintenance. I also don't live each minute in fear that I'm gonna break a nail. So far, there's lots of positives. I know they probably won't last as long, but the appointment also took half of the time. And I don't mind going to the nail salon. It's relaxing. Give a little something. That took 18 minutes. Not too shabby. It's 10.56. I typically don't eat until now. Now, if I do get hungry earlier, I will eat. Because if I actively try to not eat, I end up binging. I'm also not in a cooking mood. I made an omelet yesterday. I don't really want an omelet. I always drink one of these. I saw this at Trader Joe's, and I don't know why it was so intriguing, but I posted a very quick grocery shop with me video on TikTok. I asked what Icelandic style was, because this says it's Icelandic style. Skyr low fat yogurt. Everybody went off in the comments about how good this yogurt is. Let's see if y'all are liars. I like that it's not all liquidy at the top. That can give me the ick about yogurt sometimes. That is tart. The taste is good, but why is it so sour? 16 grams of protein though, that's good. I wonder if they're all this sour. I don't know how I feel about it yet. It honestly doesn't even taste like yogurt. And I like that part about it because I used to not be able to eat yogurt at all because of the yogurt taste. And I can't allow myself to think about what yogurt is because then I won't eat it. But I'm that way with a lot of foods. If I think about what it is, where it came from, I probably won't eat it. As of right now, this is like a five out of 10. But the more I eat it, the less I notice how sour it is. With granola, it's probably better too. You're probably over watching me eat yogurt. <laughs> Sometimes I just get little lightning crotch moments. Is that something I should be concerned about? Every person on a weight loss journey that I watch Watch their videos when starting this whole thing always drank these I never could find the ones in the white container until I went home to Wisconsin and I was able to find them at Sam's Club you wouldn't know it's protein this is an interesting combo though I'm also a salty girl I much prefer salty breakfast salty lunch salty dinner but I have not drank enough water in the past couple days I feel like salt is just not the way to go right now or at least not for breakfast I can have something salty for lunch I think I have 12 factor meals in my fridge hmm <laughs> hmm 
<laughs> I told myself I had to eat breakfast before I'm able to start my Legos. The reason that this vlog is picking up today and not continuing yesterday, the storm that happened yesterday got so bad that I sat down to start filming my Legos and I got an alert on my phone that there was a tornado. Warning, not watch, warning. It was raining so hard that you could barely see outside. I got the warning, started to panic a little, looked to the right, and I just saw all these blue explosions. Took me a minute to realize it was the power lines. So many of them. I don't know what would cause that other than a tornado. And I just got a tornado warning. And then I'm sitting here thinking, what do I do? I'm so high in the air, that can't be good. I put all the animals in the bathroom, but I couldn't see outside. So I couldn't tell you if there was a tornado or not. I was spooked though. And my bathroom is the only place I could think to go because I don't think you're supposed to get in an elevator during that time. And I'm not making my cats walk down the stairs. Apparently I like this yogurt because I'm almost done with it. Your second reminder of the video. Have you ate breakfast or have you ate today at all? If the answer is no, I need to go grab a snack. It can literally be anything. Your mind may tell you that you don't need it, but your belly says otherwise. You already got up and took a shower. It's just one more little step to eat some breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Whatever you have to call it. Call it a snacky poo. Just go give yourself some nutrients. Something is better than nothing, okay? I also filled up my second water bottle of the day. This is the camera that I got, by the way. Did I ever finish telling you about it? I never finish anything that I'm talking about, medicated or not. I'm also on a pretty low dose of Ivan, so maybe if I increase it, it'll get better. I'm a Canon girl at heart. I know how to use the Canons. I'm not saying Sony is bad by any means. First camera I ever had was a Canon. I know how to use the interfaces. The cameras just make more sense to me. I always feel weird showing you guys my camera equipment or just anytime I make a big girl purchase because I don't want it to feel like I'm shoving money in your face, but this is my job. The same way if you had a business and you needed to invest into that business, I invest in cameras. I literally couldn't do this without them. This is also not a starting camera. I actually get asked a lot about cameras and how to start a channel and I would love to just sit down and make a video about it. I think the only thing that's kept me from doing that in the past, like my fear that you guys don't care or won't watch it, I'm over that. I know there are some of you out there who do have questions about it and I feel like starting a channel in the age of influencers now is just so different. I have so much to say about it. I've gone through a lot of trial and error with cameras and with just equipment and editing softwares and trying to work the algorithm that I feel like I could have a lot to say on the topic. Let me know if you're interested in that or if you have any specific questions about it, please comment that down below. The camera that I ended up getting is the R6 Mark II. I did just get the body because I never really use kit lenses. For now, I just have the standard a 15. Sorry, I'm, in your, I'm up in your grill. A 15 to 30 lens is what I have on it right now. There are better quality lenses that you can get, but this works perfectly good. I need to learn about this camera. It's different than any other camera that I've had. I realized that I told you I got a new camera and then didn't say what it was. So that's what it is for anybody who cares. This is all the farther we have got on the Legos so far. It's gonna be all of Diagon Alley. This is all of Anders. We're gonna continue building it. It is quite the process. I'm excited because it seems like you guys really like the TikTok that I posted of it. I'm friends with a girl on TikTok named Serena and she does these Lego videos and it was just so fun to film it. I'm excited to do it during the day because I hate having the ring light on me. It can trigger my migraines. And I just think it's so fun that this gets to be work for me. Moments like this, I truly love my job. And moments that I just feel good, I truly love this being my job. Starting therapy again has been really good. I need to get set up. Oh my goodness, there's stuff everywhere. We're watching the Harry Potter movies as we build them. It took me two hours to build what I've already shown you. I'm hoping not having nails is gonna help with that. I really need to look up a YouTube video for this camera because some of these clips are just gonna look wonky and you're gonna just bear with me. I got a notification that I had a package and for the most part these days, if I have a package, it's PR or a very one-off thing that I ordered. I think the only order that I have out right now is for a new phone case because my current phone case is just not holding up. I knew that my phone case wasn't supposed to be delivered yet. So when I got the notification, I was really curious as to what the box was and it's from Sam, AKA one of my favorite humans in the entire world. I have no idea what's in it. My dearest Samantha. She put a sticker on the back with Santa and a little Burnett and a blonde sitting on his lap and put us. As a kid, I never liked cards. Now the card is my favorite part. Not sure if you have these. Dot, dot, dot. Never mind. I almost spoiled it. I hope you like your gifts. I found the biggest gift first and the rest were inspired by it. I just saw them and thought of you immediately. That's my favorite thing about me and Sam is I feel like we constantly just see things that remind us of the other person and we buy them for each other. <laughs> we keep them until the next haul. Holiday. Had to keep the tradition of making you something too. I hope you enjoy everything and it makes you smile. Love you and miss you so much. Merry Christmas, love Samantha. I'm so excited. Wait. Is there two of them? 
Those might be the prettiest glasses I've ever seen. I don't know the difference between a champagne and a wine glass. This is one or the other, but it looks like a flower. The green stem, waved edges. Bobby is already in the box. Look, Dunky, isn't it so cute? Don't you love it? Oh my goodness. Is this for a candle? The confetti is giving Taylor Swift, which is very on brand for Samantha. How precious. I'll double check with Sam so I don't look stupid, but I'm pretty sure you put one of those big old candlesticks in here. There's another one. Where do you find these? <gasps> I was right. Oh. The candle with the little flowers on it. Shut the front door. Sam taught me a trick once with how to get it to stay in here. I'm gonna have to call her and she can coach me through it. No, so <laughs> I'm sure Samantha did not know that I got this bedding when she saw these or got these or made this. Like, did you paint these, Sam? This matches my bedding perfectly. We don't deserve Samantha Joe. What is this? Oh, is this the chocolates? She added this little card that says, I got the chocolates from a local shop here and I hope they made it okay. They are chai, PB and J, espresso and eggnog. I don't know how I feel about eggnog. Eggnog is one of those things that I've always been too scared to try. I bet it's delicious, I'm just too scared to try it. Should we try one? I'm going for this one. No idea what it is. That's either chai or eggnog. Mm-hmm, whatever it is, it's good. Nom, 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 nom. Tempered fine chocolate in Nashville, Tennessee. What a nice little sweet treat. Oh my goodness, I need to call her. That is all in my teeth. Samantha Joe, if you're watching this, I know you are an incredibly busy woman. She literally works like 60 hours a week. Thank you. I love them so much. Where did you find this? And these might actually be the cutest things I've ever seen. I just need to figure out how to get it to stay. I love you. It's your favorite grandma. Back at it again with her crochet hook. How are my beautiful besties doing today? And just so you know, it is okay to give an honest answer. You don't have to say you're doing good if you're not. Eh. It's a Monday and on Mondays we crochet a few rows in between our tasks of the day. I had some time before I have to hop on a work call. I just finished editing a 50 minute YouTube video. That's not really like me. A long YouTube video for me is like 20 minutes. As much as I would love to promise you 50 minute videos in the future, Please don't think that's the new normal. We just hadn't talked in a few weeks and I needed to catch up. But now we're caught up and I can show you the beanie that I'm crocheting. This is my test beanie. Instead of taking on crochet tasks that are just bigger than my skill level at the moment, I picked a little project that I could finish. Like a beanie. Whenever I'm waiting for appointments or waiting for work calls or just waiting for something that I have to do during the day, I always scroll on social media and I genuinely think 2024 is gonna be not a no social media year for me, but I have to cut it back. I've always loved making videos and I've always loved the creative side of social media. I know a lot of people feel the same way I do. I can't really handle the comparison anymore. And for a long time, I believe that since I make these videos, I have to sit and consume social media 24 seven. And that's not the case. Today is the first day that I'm really being intentional with not going on social media. I'm sure if I looked at my phone, I would be able to figure it out. Can one of you guys tell me how I can put limits on certain apps on my phone. I'm over the comparing my life to other people's. I'm over feeling like I'm constantly not doing good enough because everyone online seems to be doing more. The airport, so this is incredibly awkward, but I was getting my hair done with Devin yesterday and we were talking about what we feel like this era is gonna be this year. I truly believe that this year I am entering my I don't want to say soft girl era. I've come to terms with the fact that I'm not a hustle bustle boss bitch kind of girly. That doesn't bring me peace and that's what I've been chasing because that's what I see everyone do online. I try to be that person and I'm just not. So instead this year I'm chasing the things that make me feel good and that bring me peace and that honestly make me feel more feminine which is weird. Well maybe it's not weird but I think all women should be able to do whatever makes them happy. All people should be able to do what makes them happy. For me that's not the hustle bustle. How busy can you make your life? I want a life where I can have some chickens and stay at home and cook a dinner, which is surprising to hear me say that, I know. Crochet stuff, build some Legos, go on walks by the water, watch the sunrises and sunsets. I think I want to be a homemaker who makes fun videos. I gotta talk to my therapist about it. And by cutting that out, I genuinely, truly believe I'm gonna look at social media in a much more positive light. It'll feel like I'm just hanging out with you guys again versus trying to be good enough and to stay relevant as if that freaking matters. 
first. So right now I would typically be scrolling and instead we're crocheting. There actually are some errands that I truly do need to run. And the phone call that I'm getting on is just a call with my manager. His name is Gianni, we stand Gianni. He wouldn't mind if I went out and ran errands while being on the phone. So maybe I'll do that. It's 2.42. What have we already accomplished today? I had therapy this morning. I did tell you guys that I found another therapist. I've seen quite a few therapists in my life. I've had a couple that I've liked, but I've also had a bunch that I haven't liked. I've said this so many times, finding a therapist can genuinely be so <laughs> exhausting and your first couple therapy appointments are just exhausting, especially if you have a lot of trauma to unpack, which I do. Some people love online therapy and I love that online therapy is there as a tool. I'm someone who just doesn't do as well online. I know that some places that you could live don't have very good mental health resources so online might be your only option which is why i said i'm glad that it's at least there but there are so many therapists in my area who specialize in a plethora of different things and so i just do better in person i think it holds me more accountable in person i didn't used to feel that way because for a little while i was so anxious that i actually barely ever left my house still don't leave my house often but i've definitely grown so much in that regard even though going in person is intimidating and can be a little bit scary. I just feel like I get more out of it when I'm sitting there across from someone. But we went to therapy this morning and it was good. It was only my second session with her, so we'll see. So far, I feel very positive about it. She seems so sweet and kind and caring. And what I like about her that I haven't loved about some therapists in the past is it doesn't just feel like she's sitting there listening to me. She is listening to what I'm saying, but she's also responding and talking back. I've had some therapists where I'm like, what is the point of me paying you right now? You're not giving me anything. But you're not giving me homework. I may as well be talking to the wall. But it does feel good to vent and just put it all out there sometimes, but I'm also paying for your expertise, you know? Like, help me. The girl that I found here in St. Pete does that. She actually gives me advice and actually questions the things that I say and helps me rethink how I'm saying them. And this was only my second session seeing her, so I feel really positive about it. Also, you guys know how I've constantly told you how much I've struggled since not being able to get my ADHD medication. And a lot of you guys have asked me like oh sorry a lot of you guys have also asked me why i can't get my adhd medication first of all there was a lot of shortages and second of all when i moved to florida i had to find a florida prescriber the wait list for these psychiatrists is insane. After calling so many psychiatrists and talking to my insurance company, it started to bring me more anxiety than anything. So I kind of just stopped, which is, not, which is not the best thing to do. When I went to my first therapy session, I had explained to her how hard it has been since not having the medication. Because before I ever had the medication, I didn't know how good I could feel. Like I didn't know how well I could function. I didn't know what it was like to have a brain that is quote unquote normal. Hold on, I have to take this call. Once again, I never finished my train of thought here. That happens a lot with me. Essentially what I'm saying is before I ever had the medication, I didn't know what it was like to function and I didn't know what it was like for my brain to work right. And then not having it and going back to struggling the way that I had struggled for years and years and years of my adult life and looking back into it in deeper in therapy, my child life as well. Ignorance was bliss. I didn't know what I was missing out on. Now I knew how I could feel. So not being able to feel that way and continuing to struggle with it, I was just super mean to myself. So I think that's where I was going with that. And I was also, going to tell you that I got prescribed my ADHD meds. My therapist was able to get me in with a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist was able to help me find a better primary care doctor. So take this as a sign. Don't be afraid. Make the appointments and go. If you guys watched my last video, I toured a house and I loved her so much. Like genuinely, probably one of the most beautiful houses I've been inside of and quite literally perfect except for the fact that she doesn't have a pool. Honestly, I really would prefer to have four bedrooms because there have been so many times where Mama Kelly and Andrew are both visiting me at the same same time and Andrew has to sleep on the couch and I feel bad because he's allergic to my cats and then they're all over him and having two guest bedrooms would be ideal especially for a place that I could plan on living for more than a year that place had three bedrooms but not really the office where the podcast would be like that would be the podcast room wasn't an actual bedroom like I couldn't put a bed in there and have the podcast set up it was more so just an office I did apply and got approved there's just been some issues because if my boyfriend were to move in with me we probably wouldn't be able to live there one because of the size but two because my boyfriend has a rottweiler unfortunately even though she is an esa with papers and the sweetest dog that it's ever walked on this planet a lot of places just have breed restrictions against rottweilers we haven't 
heard back from the landlord if his housing insurance would allow her to be there even being an ESA. Because of that, I've continued to tour other houses. Making that step in living together has been something that we've talked about a lot. I don't want to pick somewhere where we wouldn't be able to make that step, if that makes sense. Even though I love that house. But the housing market here is just impossible, you guys. Especially in St. Pete. Everything is so ridiculously expensive. I'm talking six, seven, eight thousand dollars for 1,200 square feet. I have Zillow notifications on because every once in a while a good one will pop up. We toured one two days ago that had a pool and I was so excited about it. The pictures looked so good. Everything looked so bright. It was still only three bedrooms but it was three real bedrooms to where I could have the podcast on one side and have a full-size bed in there for Andrew. It was one of those cases where the pictures were definitely better than the place when you got there. It hadn't been cleaned yet which is probably a part of the reason I felt the way I felt about it but it was just so much darker in person than what the pictures were and the bathrooms and closets were just super small that seems to be a very common issue that we're running into with houses is small bathrooms and small closets and I don't know if you guys know what my closet looks like but there's a lot of stuff in it now I have gotten rid of a lot I might actually film part two to my closet cleanup video today why not? Or at least within the next week. Closets were small. It was dirty, but that could be clean. The outside was beautiful. One of the closets didn't have doors on it. The closet doors in the guest rooms were super wonky to where it was super hard to like open and close them. They would go all over the place. And when we opened up one of the doors, there was two roaches in the closet. And I know roaches are very common in Florida, but I can't handle roaches. I was not made for roaches. If that makes me a prissy priss, okay, I can't do roaches. Or at least not see them before I sign a lease because if I see them I probably won't sign a lease and I've heard where there's one there's many and we saw two meaning there's many many roaches that place pretty much got vetoed we still haven't heard back from the first place obviously but the, the thing is is my lease isn't really up till the beginning of March or middle of March I moved in kind of later than my lease so I have time to keep looking it's just for the podcast really that I really want to start the podcast back up me and Andrew both miss it so much it was just such a good out Outlet. even though I was really stressed because I had a lot going on we're ready to up the production the cameras we have are better we're getting lighting we want it to have its own room that way the setup can just stay there we don't have to take it apart put it together the lighting isn't gonna change 24 7 that's a lot of where our stress comes from when it comes to the podcast in order for us to bring that back I have to have a room for us to do it in essentially I just left touring a house it's in Tampa it reminds me a lot of my Nashville house in the sense that it's brand new just built the the vibe of it is very similar to my Nashville house. The layout's a little bit different. It has a fenced-in yard for Duncan. The closets are so big. In fact, there's two massive walk-in closets in the master bedroom. So Gerald would be able to have a whole closet just to himself. The laundry room is massive. They said I could bring my washer and dryer, which is something I really wanted to be able to do. It solves a lot of the issues that I was having with the other houses. It's so much bigger, like so much bigger. Especially if I'm gonna live with my boyfriend, I really wanted us both to be able to to have our own spaces not like our own bedrooms but our own just spaces to go when we just need time to ourselves we have different interests and different hobbies sometimes it's nice to just have a room to go to for that the place that i just saw was five bedrooms five i could have a podcast room two guest bedrooms a room for craft in our master bedroom. That house also has a loft for Gerald where he can put all of his video games and have his little football moments. I'm not showing clips because we might get it and I wanna be able to surprise you with it. I'm a bedside table kind of snacker. I should work on that. I think earlier I had shown you guys the beanie I was starting to make. Oh, where is she? I did finish her. I found her. I also grabbed my water. This is her. I would show you up close, but she's kind of embarrassing. None of the edges are straight. Like all of the rows are kind of different lengths. I didn't have a yarn needle, so it was really hard to close the top. It's bumpy and she's much too short. I don't have a small head, but I have a short head, like a small forehead and it was still too small on me. Bottom about unraveling her because that's probably what most people do. This is my first completed crochet item that's not a blanket. So I couldn't get rid of her. Be proud of where you start. I am working on beanie number two. Might I say, she looks so much better. This yarn is slightly smaller and I feel like it just makes more sense for a beanie. I don't know anything about different types of yarns or the different weights of yarns. It also said to use a five millimeter hook, but I'm using a six for some reason. And at this point I'm committed. So I'm gonna keep using the six. 
I had posted a picture on Instagram and on TikTok of the beanie when I finished it because it was just funny. It genuinely looks like a toddler made it, which isn't me being mean to myself, by the way. It's just me being honest. I'm learning from some of the mistakes that I made on that one. I think I made this one bigger. My starting chain was definitely bigger. I don't know how much bigger she looks though. I started this yesterday and we're this far. And that's crazy because I still did all of my work yesterday and was super productive. I just also crocheted this much in my free time and I'm still pretty slow at crocheting. Seeing the progress between this and the first one just has me so excited to just continue to get better at crocheting. I'm probably so annoying and you're so overhearing this, but well, actually, I don't know how much I've talked about it. I don't remember what I have filmed for this vlog. I don't know what clicked in my head over the past few weeks. I'm a believer in everything happens for a reason. Maybe the reason that I got so triggered by those comments on social media a couple weeks ago was so I could almost be woken up to just how much of my life I'm spending on my phone. Everyone always tells me I'm not aware of my surroundings. I'm using stitch markers this time, by the way, to make sure the rows are all the same. And I saw a trick on TikTok to teach you how to do straight edges, and that has helped a lot as well. Everyone always tells me I'm not aware of my surroundings. I thought that was just because I'm ditzy or something. I realized I never look up from my phone, and I've always been super uncomfortable sitting in silence, sitting with my own thoughts, which is maybe why I struggled with hobbies and stuff. I know I'm not alone in that. It's just society nowadays. Now, other people are probably way better at it than me, or I've already made that realization and changed their habits with it. I would say for the past week or so, with the exception of late last night, I was super nauseous. I take my Zepbound shots on Wednesday. When I say Zepbound, it's the same thing as Manjaro. It's just the one that's FDA approved for weight loss. I take them on Wednesday nights, and so sometimes Thursday night, I can be pretty nauseous. Last night, I had such a hard time falling asleep, and I was super nauseous. For some reason, I found myself scrolling on my phone and scrolling on Zillow when I would wake up and I wouldn't be able to fall back asleep. So yesterday was not the best day with this. So I'm gonna choose to not focus on one bad day, in quotes. I don't even wanna look at it as a bad day. One day where I maybe scrolled a little bit more than I wanted to. My screen time was 10 or 11 hours every single day. That's embarrassing. Just in the past week, I have slowly started to feel so much better. I've also been in therapy for a couple weeks now and back on my ADHD medication, which has also helped. I have no idea what people are up to. I have no idea what's trending. I don't know much about anyone's lives right now except my families and my loved ones. And I'm loving it. I don't know why I've been so inspired to just create things recently. I like having interests and hobbies and I don't know that I've really had that ever since I was a kid. I've always told myself I don't have the time because I need to be on social media and I need to be doing what I can for work. The decision I had come to at the end of last year was that I was really just gonna focus this year on living my life. Not living my life online, like living my life, filling my cup, filling my time with the things that make me happy, finding the things that make me happy. Obviously still sharing it and filming it for you guys, but just consuming the internet less and living my life more. I just feel so good. And all I've done is make Legos and crochet one and a half beanies. I think it'd be nice to like look back on all of the things that I'm able to create this year. There's a sewing machine sitting in my car that I need, need to figure out how to use because I need to hem a dress and I have no idea how to do it. I just don't know if I got the right one. I don't know if I should have got the heavy duty one. I just got a singer from Michaels. I haven't opened it yet. I might do some research and I'll return it or swap it out for the other one if I have to. I'm not the biggest fan of New Year, New Me, but I do love that the New Year brings just so much reflection and it's a good time to just evaluate what you want the next year to have. I didn't make a vision board mostly because that just seems like a lot of work and I'd rather crochet something. I do think I want to sit down and write out some goals career-wise and goals in my life just because it would be cool to see if I accomplish them throughout the year and if not, oh well. The house I was telling you guys about earlier is so beautiful. It would just give me so much space to do what I love. Also be able to share it with somebody that I love. It's just a place that I could see being a home. It just doesn't have a pool. And for some reason, I feel like I need a pool. I just know how happy I am when I'm swimming and in the sun. And I need to remind myself that there are public pools. And I'm not someone who has an issue with a public pool. Like all of my apartment pools have been public pools. I would rather have my house that I'm constantly in be a space where I'm happy in my 
and I'm able to thrive in and have to go to a pool when I want to go swimming, even if that's three times a week. There's got to be like a membership I can get to a public pool. I feel like I would rather that than get a house that has a pool that I don't love the house as much. They did a really shit job of explaining this the first time or my ADHD meds are ADHD medding right now. All of the houses that have pools are super old and super small, like 12, 1100 square feet for two dogs, two cats, two people. That's smaller than my current apartment. It's either have a bigger house, no pool, old house, bad lighting, get a pool. Those are my options. Those are my thoughts. For some reason, whenever I crochet, I also work vomit. I was also thinking if I get, or as I get better at crocheting, obviously anything I make right now is not up to par for anything that I could possibly like sell or whatever. I was thinking at the end of every month, depending on how many things I have had time to crochet that month, I could sell this stuff to you guys. I would say give away, but yarn is really expensive. <laughs> and then you guys could maybe have a piece of me with you or in your home. Like I said, I would have to get much better before I would ever make you pay for anything. And I would just keep the stuff that I make for me. But obviously if I'm crocheting a bunch of shit, I can't have a house full of crochet. Like at some point I would have to be getting rid of them. I still haven't figured out how to follow a pattern yet. What I'm doing right now, I just saw on a YouTube video and that I do know how to do. Um, I can follow a YouTube video. I feel like at this point I know what the last stitch looks like. I'm just committed to using the stitch markers. And if it's a waste of my time, then it's a waste of my time. I'm gonna choose not to view it that way. At this point, I have bought so much yarn that I need to start creating stuff with it. And I really want to have just like a space in my next place that I can just have as like my reading room. My sewing machine can be there if I ever learn how to use the sewing machine. My vanity could be in there just to be a creating room, whether that be videos or hats. I've also set boundaries, which I tried to do before and I just didn't respect my own boundary <laughs> work-wise. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this. This industry runs off of LA time, which is three hours behind where I am in Florida. It'll be 7 p.m. here and 4 p.m. there and they're all still working. But for me, it's like my day is kind of winding down to an end and there has been no line of, okay, these are my working hours. These are my hours to just be a human being. After talking with my therapist, we decided one that I really unfortunately have to establish a good routine in my life that just solves a lot of my daily issues. Oh, I didn't put this stitch marker in either. Where did it go? Found it. A lot of the little issues that I have on a daily basis that would solve. What was I saying? Honestly, as annoying as it is to hear that, and I've said it so many times, having a routine helps. It's just something I struggle to do. I struggle to stick to a routine and not even like a 5 a.m. do this, 6 a.m. do this, just little things. It can be something that you slowly build up to. And if you don't fully stick to it, it's not the end of the world. It's more so I just need structure to my life, which I know a lot of just self-employed people in general can struggle with. Or honestly, just a lot of people that probably work from home now could also probably understand that struggle. And so she said, I really need to set that boundary of I won't take any work calls after 6 p.m. That does make things a little bit difficult communicating to LA and my managers because they're still very much working at that time. If I want this to be a positive thing and if I want to feel like I'm also a human being, it's something I have to do. Yesterday was the first day that I kind of had said no to taking a call after six and it gave me so much anxiety to do it because I just feel bad. I know it's for the best. I'm not saying that I won't film stuff at night, but TikTok is a little different. But with you guys, I can just sit here and hang out with you and talk to you the same way. I would talk to Andrew on the phone. That's kind of what my channel is at this point in my life. And if that is simply not something that you're interested in or you want different types of content from me than that, I'm not saying I won't ever do structured videos like when I did the trying on all my clothes in my closet video. I love doing stuff like that. I always reference the Cosmo video I did a little over a year ago. Maybe it was longer than that. It was so fun to make. For the most part, this channel is and will continue to be me and you hanging out in my house chatting like besties. It makes me feel less alone. I hope that it can do that for you too. I talked about this a little bit in my last video. I do plan to share more of like this stuff where hi, I'm just crocheting, hang out with me, grab a snack, we can chat. I'll probably start asking you guys on Instagram for topics or just What's your question of the week? What's the vibe of the week? What are we wanting to chat about? That way you don't feel like it's just a one-sided conversation. I've got some good advice to give and I do talk a lot on the podcast. 
if you guys haven't watched the first season of the podcast go do it she's gonna be coming back in february cats love yarn she is gonna have a new name we're doing a little rebrand she's gonna be called sidetracked i'm super excited about it so i do word vomit a lot on the podcast too it's just i'm saying all of this to say if that's not the type of channel vibe that you're looking for it is okay if we've grown in different directions i have fully accepted that at this point i will say i haven't had much of a life because i just spend it consuming social media now i'm gonna try and have a very mundane one i have learned that that's what brings me peace i definitely learned over the past two years that i don't need a big group of friends as much as that's what i see people have online that that's not necessarily what i need in my life but i do need to start doing things that bring me joy and finding those things that bring me joy not just making videos if you're looking for a friend to crochet with and hang out with and just word vomit with this is your channel i think social media has made us think that there's something wrong with a mundane life and there's not and social media has made us think that we wouldn't like that and that we need this fast-paced hustle and bustle i used to think that's what i was built for and i just don't think so anymore but i'm putting my phone down this year i think that's where i started all of that when i get out of the car to walk in a building i'm not grabbing my phone well at least i'm making a conscious effort to not anytime i'm in public i'm constantly looking at my phone like a safety crutch or something we don't know how to just live in the moment in the here and now to sit in the peace and sit in the quiet without worrying about what other people are doing i genuinely believe that if i can figure that out i will be so happy no matter what's happening on the internet because my happiness isn't found in that anymore so that's our main goal and it starts with little things like this instead of scrolling on my phone i picked up my crochet hook and some yarn and i'm gonna make a hat it seems like a much more productive use of my time even though i really need to get up and go get my laundry out of the dryer and switch the washer into the dryer i only have a couple loads left yet i haven't tried to finish it in like three days baby steps i'm gonna call my mom and check in on her but my goal is to finish this beanie tonight so hopefully by the end of this video i'll be able to show you not only this beanie but also the first beanie and we can compare and see our growth that's also something i need to get better at giving myself credit for my growth and being proud of myself instead of telling myself nope you can still be better because i can still be better but it's good to acknowledge that you're even one percent better this beanie and the first one both took me two days that's if i finish this today i feel like that's not too bad although the video says one hour beanie one hour beanie my ass how does anybody do this in one hour how is that even possible unless you have way bigger string i've also been listening to classical music i'm genuinely turning into a grandma got some ways to go so I kind of ended up finishing the beanie. What do you think? You can be honest. I'm just looking at it in the viewfinder because I'm so proud of myself. Definitely have hat hair. Ignore the palm. She looks kind of sad. I can admit that. I need to learn how to make a better pom pom. I kind of just did it and threw it on here. I just felt like it needed a palm. So much about this beanie is so much better than the first one. I didn't expect my second beanie to turn out this good. It just looks better. There's this one little section that's not straight. I improved so much from the first time. In case you want to see the first one, this was the first one I made. Just look at the edge just here it's so much shorter she's not long enough she has issues but that's okay we all have to start somewhere i will not be unraveling her i will be keeping her forever as a memory of where we started if i bought this from somebody with the exception of maybe the pom-pom i mean honestly i wouldn't think anything of it i would totally pay someone for this beanie i need to take it off because i have no reason to be wearing this beanie right now in florida but i was proud of her and i wanted to show it to you because i know i just sat here and crocheted for forever on camera with you. I was able to make this beanie because I simply wasn't scrolling on my phone. Like this is a visualization of how much time I spent scrolling on my phone. I say this took me two days or a day and a half, but in reality it probably only took like five hours, maybe five and a half. Getting quicker. I don't know if I should keep making beanies or if I should try something else now. If I made a bunch of beanies, would you guys want them? Do you hear how loud it is? So loud. I have so much yarn. I have fluorescent orange. Maybe if you hunt or you're a construction worker, I could make you something with this. This yarn is super soft, but it's also incredibly tiny and it's a cream color. The texture of this one's also very interesting. It's cream cotton. The only way I can describe this color is a purpley pink. I have two of these big things of this light pink. I liked these colors. Some people probably won't. It has a purple, a pink, a green, a yellow, a white, a big, 
girthy pale yellow. I would describe this as lavender or light purple. I also really like this one. I actually didn't know that I had another ball of this. This is what I use for the hat. Ooh, I like this one. Oh, it's sparkly. This is a purple, blue, white, multiple shades of purple, and another light purple. That's just all the new yarn that I've accumulated. That's not including the old yarn that I already had. And I got some thread to hem my dress. Some of you guys have been telling me to not attempt to hem my dress by myself. I know the lighting's awful in here, but that's really my only choice. I could not find a seamstress that could do it in time. I feel like that's a decent color match. I mean, I'm looking at this and it can't be that hard. I just fold it under, make sure it's straight and sew. I got this. Not today though. Like if you wonder why I'm moving. I hope you can hear it. We have some laundry to put away and I'll have more coming out of the dryer in literally like five minutes. If we're being honest, I don't always turn clothes right side out before I hang them up. Depends on the day. I'm gonna need to try on all of my swimsuits again. That's one of the sections of my closet that I have not gone through yet. I'm sure most of them will still fit, but I have lost weight, so it's hard to know until you try them on. I know why I bought so many swimsuits, because I moved to Florida. Most of the time I'm wearing a swimsuit more than I'm wearing clothes living here. It makes sense that I bought so many of them, but I don't even like most of them. So I need to go through them. I was gonna make a whole video just on trying on all of my swimsuits and getting rid of them and whatnot, but when I did my closet video, YouTube said it wasn't appropriate. I had to fight them, saying I quite literally have a bra on, a sports bra at that, and I have barely any torso, so it might as well be a tank top. I've watched so many creators who are thin post videos in their bikinis in way less clothes than me. You're not gonna say that this isn't appropriate strictly because I'm a big girl. And my appeal worked, they agreed with me. I just have this feeling that if I tried to do it with swimsuits, they would veto that real fast. I still have the beanie on. I'm also so ready for it to warm up here in Florida again. I can't decide if Florida winter or Wisconsin winter is more depressing. Florida winter is rainy and dreary and gloomy. Occasionally there will be a nice sunny day and it's cold enough to wear a sweatshirt, which I eat that up. I would love it, but I moved here for the sunshine and I need the sun to start sunning again. I need to go through this drawer again. <sighs> Doo -doo -doo. I'm out of room for pants again. Maybe I'll finish organizing this tomorrow. You'd be proud of me though, I haven't bought clothes in a while. I've looked at the apps a few times, but I've been really good about not buying stuff I don't need, with the exception of yarn. I've been buying a lot of yarn. This section also needs to be decluttered because I don't know what's in any of this besides my towels and a few things on this shelf. You gotta take the beanie off. As much as you don't want to, you gotta. I'm a big advocate for no overhead lights at night and I know that that's not great when it comes to filming. I love you so much, but I will not be turning the overhead lights on. This is cozier. It really does take a while. Real question, do pickles expire? Moments like this, I love being an adult. What's wrong with these pickles? The jar looks full. Let's get one that's underneath. I'm confused. Why do they taste like that? Are these the wrong kind? Hamburger dill chips. Does this brand just suck? It says they don't expire until 2025. I'm disappointed. I really did want a snack. Grapes. As a dog owner, I get really bad anxiety eating grapes, like I'm gonna drop one. It's also so sad that Duncan will go his whole life never knowing how good grapes are. You know that saying, what she doesn't know won't hurt her? What he doesn't know will kill him. Mm hmm Grapes are underrated, especially when they're crunchy. That would be why I hate living here. Because that's tame, that's mild, that's nothing compared to what's out there sometimes. I thought there was a big tall man standing next to me.
If you're a Dr. Pepper fan, this has to be the closest fake soda to Dr. Pepper that you can find. I remember when Sam tried these for the first time, she was downing them. I don't even remember how many of these she drank in one day. Her bowels were boweling. Keep in mind, this is a prebiotic soda when you drink it, okay? What a fun little cup. It's the little things in life. Like a flower cup your best friend got you. Ah. Come on, Nugget. Come on, let's go outside. Wanna go I was this close to losing a finger. This is a big load. It's always the most satisfying part about doing laundry. It's a never ending cycle. As soon as you think you're done, there's more. I also used to do massive loads of laundry, but I've been trying to do smaller loads because you guys told me that it'll clean my clothes better. I get it. You guys have also taught me that I don't need to use as much detergent as it tells me that I do. Can you sit? Okay. I am getting a little stressed. I'm a very anxious pet parent, that's just how I am. Especially ever since Snickers died, I just get really spooked and nervous anytime my animals start acting even slightly off. And this morning, Duncan was not really excited to eat his food, and he always is. He ended up eating it and it was fine, but he usually just goes straight to his bowl, eats it, it's gone within two minutes. This morning, he took a few bites and then went and drank some water and then came back to eat, which is just really out of character for him. And the way my brain works, it automatically is just telling me that he is sick and dying even though I know that's probably not the case but I just gave him his food and he kind of just sat and stared at it for a little bit and is now very slowly eating it and because I'm worried about it now I'm hyper analyzing how his stomach looks so I'm like oh is that like a distended stomach or is that how his stomach always is Harlow needs to go to the vet anyways because she is the most anxious cat I've ever had Dobby is super friendly and personable and Harlow is very friendly she just is scared of people I know people that say they hate cats are because they hiss and they're just mean. Harlow's not like that. She'll just hide from you until she decides she is comfortable around you and then she'll come out and lay on you and drool on you. Meanwhile, Dobby is just all up in your face the second you walk through the door. I've always known that she was anxious. She doesn't like being picked up. I watch Duncan very closely because he just wants to play the way that he plays with Dobby and that just gives Harlow anxiety. I've tried everything I can think of for her anxiety. They have those little feel away wall plugins that look like the Glade air freshener thingies. That's supposed to help them. It didn't help her. She just is anxious 24 7 and because of that I, I think she has started biting her back and biting the hair off her back which makes me sad for her. So she needs to go to the vet. Let me know if any of your guys' pets have ever had anxiety issues. It looks like she has little scabs on her back and I've seen her groom herself there before but I just thought she was licking herself. But obviously I don't want her to be so anxious that she's biting the fur off of her back. I don't know if there's medicine that they can give them for anxiety or what but I'm just looking at her right now and I feel so bad. I don't even understand my own anxiety. How am I going to understand my cat's anxiety? But I do know that I want to get her help. What's wrong? Are you okay? Your tail is wagging. Want to play fetch? Where's your toy? Let's play fetch. If he doesn't play fetch, there's something wrong. Want to play fetch? I've assumed position. Did you bring it back? Go get it. Donkey. Oh, are you okay? Is mom doing such a good job of cleaning? that it's hard for you to see a table. You're such a strong boy. You're such a burly boy. A burly man. Where's your toy? Are you good? Are you concussed? Wait. Go get it. Can I see your gums? Your gums look fine. I'm gonna keep an eye on him. I think I need to go to bed, but I gotta turn all the lights off. I didn't even notice how nasty it was out there. Let's go to bed. Why do I have so many lights on? Here I am ready for bed and I never put these on a hanger. We're almost there. I've been so good recently about going to bed at a pretty early time. So Duncan is slightly confused. Hello. 
why I'm doing this right before I get into bed. I will not be doing any type of skincare routine tonight. I will be removing my makeup and I will be taking that as a win. I was watching some of these clips back and some of them look really good and the other ones don't look so good. This is a way more advanced camera so it has the potential to do way more than my other cameras have. I think because of that it also is going to take me a little bit to figure out how to use it and to get the settings right. As I was looking back at the clips I don't know if it's just my eyes and them being funky. Some of the clips looked almost slightly out of focus whenever I wasn't like right in front of the camera. I'm gonna watch some videos tomorrow about the best settings for this camera. I just haven't done it yet. I don't know why. I had bought this once a long time ago. It's the deep cleansing oil from DHC. I don't remember how I got introduced to it in the first place, but I have no idea why I stopped using it. I probably just got sent a different product and used that instead. I saw it in Sephora at some point in the last couple months and bought it again. I just started using it the past couple days and I I forgot how much I like this stuff. It leaves my skin feeling so nice and it doesn't burn my eyes. I use a couple of different other makeup balms or makeup remover balms, most of which hurt my eyeballs. Probably because you're not supposed to use them on your eyes, but I don't listen. I normally sleep with my sleepy tie, but I don't know where it is already. This headband is also from Sleepy Tie and I used it last night the same way I would use my sleepy tie and it worked, so I'm gonna try it again. Works just the same. I'm already in here. I could just do a little skincare. My skin will thank me for that later. The hair is gonna drive me nuts. A beanie baby. That made us 1% better. A shower would also make me 1% better. Ugh. Are you ready for bed? Excuse me, I gotta get to the button. Good night.